Hi everyone, it's meteorologist Joe Chaffee on this uh, Thursday. As uh, we haven't done one of these uh, videos uh, separately with the upper air, where I could at least illustrate and draw on it, so I thought I'd do that today. Uh, I'm still still in vacation mode and will be for another couple of days, so this is uh, just a little bit easier. And I didn't want to not do anything as uh, we're going forward. We have the upper pattern uh, changing a bit, so uh, as we uh, take a look at the view of the jet stream pattern across North America uh, for the end of this week. You've got uh, a rather interesting pattern that, that is uh, uh, shaping up, a uh, breakdown of that big upper air ridge uh, that was in the east, and, and now you have a bit of troughing, and that has brought down some cooler air. We've got a ridge uh, of high pressure uh, in the west for a change. And you also have troughs out uh, in the Gulf of Alaska, a storm that's sitting uh, near Iceland that is going to pick up Hurricane, uh, Tropical Storm Maria and Hurricane Lee as they head out uh, to the east. So we're, we're seeing an upper air that's kind of transitioned a bit <coughs> into a, <coughs> a late September upper air pattern the way it's supposed to be. Now we have a secondary trough that's sort of swinging the east and bringing in a shot of cool air, but you'll notice as we go through the weekend and into next week, we start to change again. And what happens is uh, that we get that trough back in the west and the ridge comes back in the east. Uh, this is uh, something that uh, we really didn't see very much of uh, over the last few months. When the ridge in the east popped up, it only lasted for a day or two uh, during the summer months. Uh, all of a sudden, it's just decided to get very active and strong. Uh, and the troughs have been in the West. Also, uh, just note, by the way, that their connection in Canada, <clears throat> as far as the flow is concerned, is, is kind of cut off here. So we're not seeing, you know, cool air masses from Canada in a setup like this making much penetration uh, southward, uh, certainly not with this upper air pattern. And as we move now through the middle of next week, so we're at next Wednesday, you still got that ridge in the east. Uh, trough still in the west. Now it gradually tries to swing eastward, but uh, look at by the uh, as we get to day nine and ten, you still have the trough west ridge east idea, uh, and that's going to carry us probably into the first ten days of October. Now you'll also notice that at least from the standpoint of the GFS, now I don't know how real this is, but you've got um, let me let me zoom out over here. Um, so you have one, two, whoops, let's go back, hang on, there we go. So <clears throat> let's try this again. So according to the GFS, uh, by this stage of the game, which is in the uh, beginning of the second week of October, you've got, I did it again, two, three tropical systems uh, being shown. And you have this upper high that's kind of draped to the north, uh, the main jet stream uh, up into southeastern Canada. So the GFS certainly implies that the tropics are going to be uh, very, very active. Uh, in the west, of course, with the trough being this deep, that means that you're going to have some unsettled weather to deal with. And it's not really till we get to the end of the period, if this is even correct at this point, uh, you've got uh, a ridge finally back in the west and the trough in the center of the country. Now, whether that is the case or not remains to be seen, but um, certainly the upper air pattern is going to go back to this ridge east trough west idea, which means warmer than average temperatures on the whole are going to continue after this cool shot that we get this weekend. So what does this mean with respect to uh, the everyday weather? Well, let's uh, look at the surface map uh, and uh, we'll uh, uh, take you across the United States because we paid so little attention to the West, and I feel really bad, because I know there's some a lot of you that watch from the western part of the United States, and uh, let me uh, set this up. We'll go back to the current map here. So here we have Maria offshore, uh, and moving out, cool high building into the east. You can even see that it's cool enough for some snow in parts of southeastern Canada. Uh, that uh, cooler air gets a secondary push. Now, notice that by Sunday, there's low pressure that develops a small little low 
develops east of the Florida coast. Now, this could be a small tropical system, so we're going to have to watch for that possibility. And the GFS does take this inland, possibly as a weak tropical storm. Um, we'll see if that's the case. But notice in the west with that troughing, you're getting uh, some snow action in parts of Wyoming and Montana. Uh, in the east, uh, it's uh, the, the ridge position being reestablished. You get weak cold fronts that sort of try to backdoor their way through. Uh, this just didn't lo doesn't look as warm as the setup we just had. It'll be warmer than normal, but I don't know that it'll be record highs. Uh, there might be a day or a day or so, a day or two that could set up that way, but especially if the model is correct as we go later in the period with this idea of three tropical systems out there, and you can see two of them being indicated here by day 10. Now remember, and I've said this a, a, a hundred times, and I'm gonna say it again, we know that the models get squirrely with the idea of beyond day five. So we don't even know if any or all of those systems are real. I happen to think that maybe one of them might be, and I'll show you why. Uh, but going forward, uh, you start to get the pattern changing again. You see how busy it is with regards to the tropics in the eastern part of the United States. It does this sort of bizarre nonsense with, with, with uh, two tropical systems. But I want to uh, look at the European from last night because I think this is probably the more realistic view of what uh, may transpire with respect to the tropics. And we'll put up the North Atlantic view. We mentioned yesterday that uh, pressures, actually we've been mentioning it for the last number of days, pressures across the Caribbean and, and the Gulf of Mexico are going to be running uh, abnormally low uh, over the next week or so, beginning uh, this weekend and certainly carrying our way uh, in through next week. And it's where it's in that area that the Europeans spins up this rather large low pressure area in the northwestern Caribbean that it winds up uh, taking northeastward from there. Uh, I, I think that there's a real possibility of this happening. And also, uh, I believe with these types of systems, Usually, uh, when you get these broad systems this time of year, uh, we see them be, be big rainmakers uh, because of the source region where they come from. A lot of moisture being available from the tropical Pacific, the Caribbean, Gulf of Mexico. Uh, water temperatures here are very warm, but the whole upper air setup when pressures are low like this, you can wind up with th th these systems being big rain producers. So this is, I think this is where you're probably going to see the chance for tropical storm development. Uh, beginning um, later uh, during the latter part of next week. Uh, the European, I think, has the right idea. You notice it doesn't really spin up too much uh, out uh, to the east of there. It, it kind of tries, but it, it, you know you don't really have spun up lows. You have actually a very strong low uh, in the Atlantic uh, that's uh, southeast of Newfoundland at this point. And that might have that might be some kind of semi-tropical system that develops out near Bermuda, if you want to argue that. And then we have a deep low uh, that's up in northern Minnesota on this model. We look at the upper air. Uh, the, G, the European does have the ridge in the east idea. You can see it here by early next week. But it and it, and it gets actually pretty strong in the Ohio Valley, but. It also begins to break it down a little bit faster uh, and brings more energy out of Canada than the GFS does. Now, whether this is correct or not remains to be seen. But I think the, you know these are at least the things we're looking at uh, in the coming days with regards to um, the overall pattern. Let me uh, show you what's going on on the satellite this morning because you do have disturbed weather here in, over Cuba and extending up into the Bahamas. This is what the models make into a low off the Florida coast early next week. You can see uh, out uh, in the Atlantic, Hurricane Lee, uh, which is now moving northward. And as we look at this particular satellite view swinging into the eastern part of the United States, you've got, uh, you know, that cool air is beginning to arrive. You've got a secondary push of cool air with another front approaching uh, Lake Superior. Tropical Storm Maria is moving away from the Atlantic seaboard at this point and Lee is moving in tandem with it, <clears throat> both going out to the north, northeast, and they're eventually going to merge with a large low pressure area that's near Iceland and become, you know, one big storm in the North Atlantic. Uh, you know, this is, this happens. It's not, uh, you know, that unusual. And that storm is probably going to wind up impacting 
uh, areas in Northwestern Europe and probably the UK uh, as we uh, go forward. But both these systems are going to miss Nova Scotia and miss Newfoundland uh, and southeastern Canada. So they're going to go out way to the south as this front pushes through that area as well. I don't want to leave uh, my, uh, you guys out that are watching uh, from that part of the world. Uh, you're, you, you don't, I don't see any threats from the two tropical systems for you uh, based on what we're looking at. And then out in the west, really don't have too much going on. There's a little disturbance that's lifting up through the Rockies here. A lot of low clouds being pulled up northward. Uh, don't see too much in the way. A little bit of convection down in New Mexico and parts of Texas. Uh, weather system approaching the Pacific Northwest, but much of the West Coast enjoying some uh, pretty nice weather. So we'll uh, end it right here. Um, hope everybody has a great day. Uh, you should, uh, because uh, the weather in the east at least has turned cooler and we're no longer in, in the uh, territory of record highs anymore. And it's going to be a stair step cool down that we're going to see. It's not going to be a cool down that comes in a big rush. You were knocking off a few degrees today uh, in the highs in the uh, set mid 70s to near 80. We'll, we'll probably see temperatures in the low to mid 70s on Friday, a few showers Friday night and Saturday morning. And I'm talking about, by the way, the eastern Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York City, Long Island, Connecticut, southern New England area. Uh, 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 maybe a couple of showers Friday night and Saturday morning, and then some rather cool temperatures for Saturday, Saturday night into Sunday. All right, folks, have a great day. Uh, we'll uh, talk to you possibly tonight. I'll be possibly doing a live stream tonight. If not, uh, we'll do one uh, tomorrow.